Hello everybody, Trey back here again with another quick tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make a reverse spin back effect. Like if you were to grab your turntable vinyl and throw that one back. It sounds a little bit like this. So I like to make these out of the track that I'm working on just to make sure that all of the sounds flow together smoothly. So to be able to make that, first off we're going to start with a sample beat over here. Of course I've got my drum channel, I've got an, a little arpeggiator, and I've also got a bass going on. Let's see what this sounds like. So, with a reverse spin back like that, I like to use those when I'm trying to transition between one part of the beat to the other. It could be my intro into my drop, it could be my drop into my breakdown, etc. So, uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is first off select this last chunk of my pattern. So you see that these patterns take up eight beats, so I'm just going to go ahead and select that entire group. But I usually like to go eight beats or more just to make sure I get the right kind of effect. So to get this one recorded, I'm going to go over to my mixer. You'll see that everything is lined up over here. Now I'm not going to be using the individual tracks. I'm actually going to be using my master track. So I'm going to go ahead and come over to my mixer, and then I'm going to go ahead and throw in Edison. So, one thing to be able to set this one up is I'm going to switch this from on input to on play. I'll show you why in just a second. Let's go ahead and get this recorded. So, the reason why I have this one selected for on play is because whenever it loops back either to the, your selection range, it goes all the way back to your loop point or the beginning of the track, it's going to give you this little song jump. So, I'm going to double click on this song jump. This part is what I do not need, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So I'm left pretty much with just that loop. Now I'm going to take this loop and I'm going to drag it from this little icon over here and put it into my track. So of course right now it takes up the entire space of this one. Now my most effective uh, use of this is just within the last couple of beats before it loops back. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up right here, and I'm going to double click it op to open up the sample channel over here. I'm going to do a couple of different things. First off, I'm going to go ahead and reverse that, and then I'm going to go over here to my effects target, and I'm going to grab this pogo knob. I'm going to drag that all the way up to the top. This one will give me a little bit of that tape stop effect going from a fast to a low beat, and sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> Now, of course, that one is still a little bit long, so I'm also going to come up to the time stretching tool, and I'm just going to click and drag that up until it fits inside that little bracket right there. Of course, this one does automatically snap for you to help make that a little bit easier. So let's see what this one sounds like. So in this particular case, it is a little bit of abrupt change when it goes into that spin back. So to be able to help accommodate for that, I'm going to go ahead and go to my kick drum, uh, basically just this sample, and I'm going to click and drag from this audio sample just straight into my playlist. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually line this one up. Now it is a little bit short, so I'm going to go ahead and just go to my half step tool and make sure it butts up right against that side here. Now I'm going to double click inside here, just click reverse, and that gives me that little bit of a lead in into that um, reverse spin here. <laughs> So that one is definitely going to be a, a little bit easier to buffer on that transition for it. Now I am going to go ahead and also add in another sound over here too to help that transition even further. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a simple cymbal track. Now this one, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, just reverse that one, make sure that it's lined up appropriately. You could do this in a couple of different ways over here. Sometimes I'll have it layered in to lead into that reverse spin like this. <laughs> But in this particular case, I also have a cymbal track over on this side as well. So I'm actually going to use that to help transition as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and move that one right over so it lines up right to the end. So this one is a really helpful tool when you're trying, of course, like I said, to move over between different parts of the beat, but you can also use this same effect and just throw it in in different parts. Now, I did also mention that we can do this either with your drums by themselves or the full beat. Basically what I do if I'm doing just the drums is I'll do all of the same steps, but first I'll go and I'll just mute all of my instrument channels so that when I record it into my master track, it's only getting my drums. This is helpful like if I'm doing a lot of 
uh, automations or different effects going on with my synths that I don't want to lose when I record them and flip them or anything like that. So just having that drum backing does give it a little bit of that uh, easier transition as well. So that's all the time that I have today. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you take care.